UIs in Unity Tiny are simple to use and can easily be updated. Hello and welcome back to another Unity Tiny video, where we will be creating a score system and a UI system to display that score. I'll be adding a score and a UI system to this project, which was the last video we left off on in the playlist. So the first thing we'll want to do is go back into that project, which is here. Make sure you have the project open and we'll want to create a new entity group. Let's name this entity group Game UI because it's going to hold the canvas and the UI components for our game. Right click on Game UI, go to UI and make a UI canvas, which will add a canvas and a canvas camera to your project. After we create our canvas, you'll want to right click it again, go to UI and create a panel. This panel is going to be the display for our UI. So let's get a sprite for this panel. The sprite that I'll be using is actually a modified sprite from the Match 3 Samples project. You can get it from the link in the description below. So I'll go ahead and drag that into my graphics folder. And this object, if you look, is just a circle, but we're going to be setting it up to use Unity's 9 slicing to be able to make different size squares with the circle. So let's change a few settings real quick. We'll change pixels per unit to 1. Change filter mode to point no filter. Then we'll go to the sprite editor after applying our changes. And in the sprite editor, let's drag these green bars to where it circles off the center square. Go ahead and click apply. And after we apply that, we can go to our panel and use this as our image. Then if you go to your panel, you'll see that you're able to change the size of the circle to create whatever square size you want. Let's set this up to about what size we're going to use it for. And then on this panel, let's create two more UI pieces to hold a label for the score and the score value. So go to UI, Create, Image. We'll go to the image, remove the sprite renderer, we don't need that. Let's change this size to be the top half of this square inside of our boundaries. Then on here, let's add a new component, type in text, and you're going to add a text 2D renderer. Make sure to click on all of these if they are not already added to your project. So click add text 2D style, 2D style. Import your text mesh pro essentials if you need to for your project. Import your examples and extras if you want to. Once that's done, you can exit out of that box, go back to your image. Let's actually rename this to say label score. On here, we can type the text that we want it to display, which will be score. We're going to have a size of around 15. And let's add in a text 2D auto fit and put the size between 0 and 20. Now if you click on bitmap font, you can choose a font that you want to use. Since we imported the examples and extras from the TextMesh Pro Essentials, you can pick one of their example text for your project. I think I'll use this one for now, we might change it later. Now after doing that, let's add a layer sorting in. To do that, you'll click add tiny component, search for layer, and add a layer sorting. We're going to put this on layer 2, go back to our panel and put it on layer 1. So add a layer sorting and make sure its order is 1. Let's go back to our label score. Then we're going to duplicate this and call this one label score value because this is the one that will actually display your current score. Let's zoom in and move this towards the bottom half of this square. Change this to say 9999. Excellent, now that we have that set up, we need to make it actually be able to spawn in the game UI when the game enters the play state. So to do that, let's go into our scripts folder. We're going to go into the game service script. Inside of here, we're going to copy and paste this and rename this to the name of our UI that we just created, which was game UI. So just type game UI. And right here, we're going to name it UI underscore game. 
Then we can just instantiate the UI game after we instantiate these other objects. So just copy and paste this and replace that name with UI game. Let's go back into our project. Now we can save and unload the game UI. But before we do that, let's go to the canvas camera and change a few things. Change the culling mass to nothing and then change it to UI. Let's put our half vertical size on 10. Change your depth to 1. Change your layer to UI. And then go ahead and select all of these and change their layers to UI. Excellent, go ahead and save the game UI and then we can unload the entity group. Let's click on play and see if that our and see if our UI is displayed. You can see it is displayed, but the size is messed up. Let's go back into our project and see if we can find out why. The first thing we want to do is where it says UI scale mode. Let's change this to scale with screen size. We're going to put the reference resolution on 225 and 400. We'll change the match width or height to 1. Now let's change the sizing of our canvas. If we click back on it and go to the panel, we can resize this to look correct again. Then remove this where we want it to be. Put your rec transform to always be at the top right corner, so it'll always be at the corner of our screen. Let's make it a little smaller. Change our text size now that we've changed that those sizes. Let's click play again and see if that worked. You can see our score is now more correctly to the side, but the coloring is wrong. I'm not sure exactly how to fix this. The one thing I do know we can do is just change to a different font until it works. Let's try this font. A quick way to fix the decoloration of the text is to just go into the Match3 sample project from the Unity Tiny Samples and grab their Pixelari text from the Match3 project and just drag it into your project. So if we create a new pro file in our platformer and call it Fonts, inside of here we can drag the fonts from the Match3 sample projects into this folder. Once we have it added, we should be able to use it as a text for our bitmap fonts. Go ahead and select it and click play and see if our colors are displayed a little better. We now have a better displayed score color, so I think we'll stick with that. Let's click on this one and change the color a bit just for visual reasons. Click play and see if you like it. I think I'll stick with that for now. Let's go ahead and change this to a zero. We can save and deload this entity group. Now we need a way to store the score value. How we're going to do that is by going into the components folder and creating a new component called score. So right click, create, tiny, component, we'll name it score. And on here, we'll add a new field, which is going to be an INT. We'll make it an INT 16, and we'll call it value, because it will be the value of our score component. Now inside the bootstrapper, right click and create empty. We'll call this new entity score, and on here, drag your score component. Save your bootstrapper entity group. And now that we have a component that can store our score value, Let's create a way for our UI to display the score value. Right click, create, and we'll make a new tiny TypeScript system and we'll call it display score system. Go ahead and open that file up after it compiles. And inside of here, we'll look for the score text and then update the text renderer to display the current score. Where the score text is, is on our entities component called game UI. Underneath our canvas in the panel, we have the label score value, and we need to create a way to easily find this. The easiest way to do that is if we go into our components and create a new component by going to tiny component, and we'll call this score display. 
We'll use this as a tag to easily find our label score value. Just drag your score display onto this label score value UI entity. Then we'll go back into our project and we're going to do a this dot world dot for each and what we're going to be looking for is that score display that we just created. So say game dot score display and we're also going to be looking for the text renderer so it'll be ut dot text dot text 2d renderer. We'll call these score and tr Now inside of this this.world.foreach, we're going to be grabbing the score value and updating our text renderer's text to be the same as our score value. But to easily grab the score value, let's create a new system. That system is going to be called a score service. So going into our scripts folder, we can go to create, tiny, and we'll create another TypeScript system and call it score service. open that file up and inside of here we're going to get rid of the extends ut.component system get rid of the on update we'll make a static score entity and what this is going to do is store the entity that holds the score component that we created earlier so we'll make it a ut.entity and spell static correctly then we'll want to make a function called get score which is going to be retrieving the score entity if it's been set, and if it hasn't, we'll find it and set it to this entity. So say static get score, and it's going to return a game.score, and we're going to ask for a world. Inside of here, we'll say if explanation mark, meaning the opposite of what we're typing, so if true, we'll want false. So if world.exist, what we're looking for if it exists is the score entity that we just set up. And if it does not exist, we'll say this.score entity is equal to entity by name. The entity name that we're looking for is the entity that we set up earlier called score. Then we'll say if explanation mark world.exist this.score entity, meaning were we able to find it with our world.get entity by name. And if we were not able to find it, we'll want to say this.score entity is equal to null and we'll return null. You can hit Alt Shift F to auto organize that code. And now outside of here, so if the score entity component does exist, We'll say return data the data that we want the the entity that we want the data off of is this.score entity and the data that we want is game.score. So we're looking through the world and seeing if a score entity is not currently existing. If it doesn't exist, we'll set the score entity that we created here to the world.get entity by name score, which is this entity right here. And if we were able to set that, we do one more check to make sure we found it. If we did not find it, set it to null and then return null. But we need to put a open bracket and a close bracket right here to only return null if there was not a score entity found. And then after running all of this code, we'll just return the component data retrieved from the score entity that we set up. The component data that we're wanting is the game.score. Now that we have this function set up, we can go back into our display score system and we'll say let score value equals game.score service dot get score pass in the world. The object we want off of the score is the value, so we'll say dot value. Now we want to convert this int to a string, so we can just say dot to string. Close off your line. Now we'll say if the score value is not the same as the text on the UI component, we'll set the UI component's text to be equal to the score value by saying tr.text is equal to score value. So this will 
look for our score display within the game and grab its text 2D renderer and use the score value that's retrieved from our score service to set the text 2D's renderers to the score value. So now all we have left to do is to create a way to actually adjust the score. So we can go back into our score service folder and we'll create one more function for adjusting the score. We'll say static adjust score We'll need to ask for the world, which is a ut.world, and we'll need a value, which is the value we'll be using to adjust the score with. And inside of here, we'll say let score equals this.getScore, passing in the world. Then we'll use the retreat score to say score.value plus or equal to the value that we passed into this function. And then we'll set the component data by saying world.setComponentData. This dot score entity, the component data we want to set, is the score. We can now use this function to adjust the score that's stored within here that holds the value inside of our project on this entity. When we want to adjust the score value is when an enemy dies, so let's go into our attack system and see how that's done. If you look right here, it says health system dot adjust health. So let's go into this function and see if there's a way to return whether or not the enemy died. So it checks right here if the enemy dies, and it checks right here if the enemy dies. If we change this to a boolean instead of just a void function, we can return true if the enemy dies and return false if the enemy doesn't die. So let's return true here because it says this dot die when its health is below zero. And then here, where it also says this dot die if it doesn't have a health component. If we did not return true on either of those functions, we'll have another return right here that says return false. We can now go back into our attacking system. And right here, let's put an if on here. And if this returns true, we'll add our we'll add a value to our score system. So let's say game.scoreService.adjustScore, passing in the world, and the amount that we want to adjust the score by, which will be 10. So if the health system.adjustHealth returns true, which if we go into here, we can see that it returns true when the enemy dies, we'll adjust our score by 10. Let's save everything that we did, go back into our project, and see if that worked, because it's been a while since we actually tested it, so there's no telling if something broke. The game started up with a score value of 0. Let's load in an enemy and attack it and see if we get 10 points. You'll see that when the enemy died, our score went up by 10. Let's kill a few more enemies and confirm that it's actually working. We have a value of 20, now we have a value of 30, and now a value of 40. Excellent! That seemed to work. Let's go over here and kill these stacked enemies, get an extra 60 points. Cool! So I hope you enjoyed this video, it was pretty simple. We learned how to display a UI and update a text renderer on that UI to be equal to a score that we're storing within our game. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please consider liking and subscribing, and until next time, have a good day.